definition. It's kind of what we've been exploring in so many talks, really, definition. And I've got a poem called Definition that I'm going to read out for you right now. You want me to be like you? Not different. Not remind you that life is contingent. To make you feel uncomfortable in your skin. Not remind you that wholeness is not physical, but the great invisible. Not remind you that the body does not define the boundary of self. Not remind you that all that is material is not being. You want me to be like you, but I'm not. It's a bit of a harsh poem in some respects, isn't it? Um, I wrote that after an accumulation of experiences in a wheelchair, on crutches, wearing a prosthetic limb, all based on people's reactions to me as a disabled person. Uh, and that's what I'm going to explore today, the definition of disability. And maybe how we perhaps need to rethink about how we think about disability. And maybe see disability where perhaps it isn't seen. I'm very, very lucky. I say that every day. In 2002, I survived a near-fatal road accident. And as a consequence of that accident, life offered me a second chance. Um, I ought to say that this isn't a lifestyle choice. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it as a lifestyle choice. Um, what I went through um, was rather terrible. But I'm not going to really talk about that. Um, as a consequence of becoming disabled, and strange as it may seem, I feel more comfortable now in my skin now than I did before that accident. I have a clearer sense of identity as a disabled person. I have to say that I'm very glad to be alive. And I'm glad to have had this opportunity to carry on the journey of my life, even though it's incredibly uncertain. My purpose today, if you will, is to invite you to join me on that journey, just for a little while. So I'd like to invite you to take a more purposeful and a more nuanced stance on disability, whether we're disabled or not. Let's just take a moment, shall we, to reflect, to pause. Think about this. Disability, like old age, death, taxes, are inevitable in some respects. They cross all boundaries of ethnicity, race, gender, of sexuality, of education, and socio-economic status. Anyone can be born disabled. Anyone, through the happenstance of life, be it through serious illness or through accident, become disabled. Just like I did in my late 30s. When we think about the words disability, or disabled, I certainly find myself asking some questions. Who's disabled? And how are they disabled? I guess the answer to the first question could be really simple. I'm disabled. You can see that, can't you? 
seems obvious. But if we look at this view of disability from this perspective, we see it as embodied in the person. And in other words, we might actually say that we place disability squarely upon the individual experiencing it in the disabled person. This particular lens, and we've been talking a lot about lenses and views through the talks that we've seen today. This particular lens in which we view disability to a large degree influences social policy, healthcare, the built environment, and how disabled people experience equity across all the social determinants of health and well-being. In a more pernicious way, this point of view determines the prevailing societal and cultural attitudes towards disabled people. And the roots of these views are complex and deep, and I don't have enough time to explore them with you today. I, like so many people who are disabled, run into this kind of discrimination on a daily basis. I'm going to illustrate just by one example uh, what I mean. I'm a poet. I'm interested in how words are used to define ourselves and define us as individuals or as groups. And one of the things that I run into quite a bit is this. It's a statement that I get told. Um, I should say that I am told this. There's no kind of invitation. There's no explanation. Uh, I'm simply told that I don't see you as disabled. And as a poet, I would split that line into I don't see you. I don't see you. Even though they're right in front of my face saying that, they say that I don't see you as disabled. And I kind of wonder what do they mean? Because in one sense, clearly I am. But in another sense, I'm not. And I'm trying to understand what do they mean by that. But I don't see you as disabled. Because I've been told that when I've been in my wheelchair, I've been told that when I've been using crutches, and I've been told that when I'm wearing my prosthetic leg. So it doesn't necessarily determine the circumstance of how I present myself in the day to day. But some people say that I'm not disabled. I'm gonna show you an image as well, just to maybe illustrate how image and perceptions aren't necessarily what we first think. So I'm often reluctant to share this image, so I'm sharing this image to illustrate this point of whether we see disability or not. And at first sight, Often people's reactions is, oh, that's so inspirational. Here I am running on a beach. Uh, but as many disabled people will often say, I'm no one's inspiration. And as a photographer as well, we also know that images don't tell the whole story unless we know the context behind them. So as you see this image of me running on a beach, with Sophie the Lurcher, you might be under the false impression that right now, Phil on that photograph is outrunning a Lurcher. But that's not true, is it? You know that's not true. Sophie, bless her heart, 
throughout the day as I ran up and down that beach always stayed slightly behind because Sophie is an enlightened being. She's no longer with us any longer. And she recognized that it was my time to shine in the sunshine because it had taken me 10 years to get to that point where I could run on a beach. It doesn't show 15 years of nightmares on a nightly basis and the fear of going to sleep. You can't see that from that image, can you? But that's my experience post-accident. Can you think about what that might be like to be actually afraid to go to sleep? I know some of you know exactly what I mean. It doesn't show the daily mental health issues that I live with as well. It doesn't show so much. It doesn't show the chronic pain that I'm in. It doesn't show a great deal. And yet we have an image that if we take it at its superficiality is a fabulous image. So, I'm hoping that we're beginning to start to see and begin to recognize that perhaps we do need to start to think about how we see and how we perceive. Because it seems to be a theme that's being present throughout all the talks, perception. So in order to do that, we need to change our minds. And one of my favorite poets, authors, musicians, Gil Scott Heron said that the first revolution is to change your mind. Because the perceptions and attitudes that impact disabled people on a daily basis are very much rooted in perceptions, in attitudes. And I'd like you to kind of take to heart that first revolution, that you can change your mind, but it's not that difficult, actually. It's really not that difficult to change your mind. And this isn't new, is it? We, we hear this about racism. We hear this about sexism, but it's so much about perceptions. It's so much about attitudes. And that requires a change of mind. I'm also going to share with you a favorite quote from Albert Camus, one of my favorite philosophers, a French philosopher, author and journalist. And he says that freedom is nothing else but the chance to be better. So my invitation really today, my purpose, is that we think about disability and that we begin to change our minds and be better because as a consequence, the world will be a better place for everyone. Thank you. <laughs>